Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Riles and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into the first episode of my patch programmability series. This series is all about getting the most out of your modules by using them in creative and sometimes unconventional ways. Think surge style patching, reimagining what a module can do by rerouting signals, creating feedback loops, and really exploring its full potential. We're going to take a look at the hold function on the Your Analog Contour 1 module. This is a slew limiter and function generator slash envelope generator, and the hold circuit functions in a very unique way. Today we're actually going to try to make it work like a traditional sample and hold. There will be some challenges along the way, but I think that's part of the fun. All right, let's head over to the synth. First, I'll patch up a simple voice using Contour 1 as an envelope triggered by the press point. This will give you a sense of the hold behavior in action. As you can hear, when the gate is high, the hold circuit pauses or freezes the envelope. It resumes rising or falling as soon as the gate goes low. Now while the hold input has a lot of potential uses, today we're going to explore how to turn it into a true sample and hold. So what makes Contour 1's hold input unique? Let's take a quick detour into some definitions. A traditional sample and hold circuit samples a voltage on the rising edge of a trigger or gate and holds that value until the next pulse. You only get the sampled value at the output. The original signal is never passed through. A track and hold works differently. It tracks the input when the gate is high, meaning it lets the signal through, and then it holds when the gate goes low. There are some that work inversely too. Contour 1's hold function is neither of those exactly. Here's how it behaves. It samples on the rising edge of a gate, just like a traditional sample and hold, but it only holds the voltage while the gate is high. Once the gate drops, it stops holding. I like to think of this hold circuit as a freeze. And here's a cool detail. The hold input uses Schmidt trigger logic with a low threshold, meaning you can use more than just standard gates to activate it. So how do we get this hold input to behave like a traditional sample and hold? Well, we're going to need to stretch the incoming gate long enough to hold the voltage until the next gate, basically extending the time the gate stays high. To do that, you can use another slew limiter, an envelope generator, or a dedicated module for gate and trigger stretching. In this patch, I'll use another Contour 1. I've got four of them here, and it's a great chance to show off more of what they can do. In this patch, I'm going to sample noise and use it to create random pitches with this oscillator. This is a common way of using a sample and hold, and is a great way to hear what is happening. I'll set up the patch here. going to take one of these noise outputs and plug it into the input of the contour one we're using as a sample and hold. The output will go into this oscillator's volt per octave input. And then we'll actually trigger this contour one that we're using as a gate delay. Oops and we'll take the fall output into this Contour 1's hold input. Okay, let's have a listen. Now if we set the rise time high enough, the gate will be stretched out long enough that we are getting the results we wanted out of the sample and hold. Let's have the contour one trigger itself in loop mode. So 
So now the hold function is working like a traditional sample and hold. But there are a few things to watch out for. One of those is analog droop, which is more noticeable on pitch signals, especially unquantized ones. This is due to the analog nature of the hold, and it may be an issue if your gates are really far apart, like if you're working with really slow tempos or longer rhythms. As you could hear, we're starting to drip down in pitch ever so slightly. Another thing to watch out for is fault time limitations. An envelope generator or slew limiters function can only last for so long. As you can hear, eventually, the falling signal reaches zero volts and we'll hear the noise coming through the other Contour 1's input. Just keep listening. If you want really long notes, try feeding the inverted output back into the fall times rate CV input. This output sends a negative 10 volt envelope, so it is maximizing the fall time beyond the panel control. And the CV input, if you send it positive voltage, it speeds up, and if you send it negative voltage, it slows down. As you can hear, it can really last a long time, and I'm not for sure how long it can last. Okay, let's move on. One last thing to watch out for is sometimes a tiny bit of signal sneaks through during the attack phase. And this is because the attack time is sometimes not short enough. Now, I'm not hearing it right now but I'm gonna imitate it by slowing down the rise phase. It's a little too much. But I have heard this result before, and the way I solved it was to take the rise output and put it and feed it back into the rate CV input for the rise time. And that essentially just speeds it up to maximum speed. And that solved our issue with a little bit of noise getting through. Let's wrap up with a quantized version of the patch. I have a quantizer off screen and I've disabled its internal sample and hold since we have our Contour 1 handling that duty. So let's slow down our tempo, and let's use that trick we discovered earlier by taking the inverted out and sending that signal into the fall times rate CV input to maximize our fall time. And what I wanna do here is just listen to the droop of the hold input, of the hold function, I mean. If you focus on this LED here, you'll notice we haven't um, re-triggered the function, but if you've been listening, we also haven't yet drooped down far enough to reach another note in the quantizer. It's 
still going, still holding. Okay, there we finally trooped down, but we're triggering another note at this point. Anyway, that really shows you um, how long you can really hold a note using the hold function. So this little trick here should free us up to use about any tempo we might need. Well, we have everything working as it should and discovered a few workarounds on some issues that may come up. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to be notified of more videos like this. Bye for now.